Welcome to Why We Talk. I'm today's host, Dr. LaRonda McGrath, CEO of YWCA Central Alabama. Join us each episode as we speak with leaders and visionaries about what's important in our community. And that includes increasing access, opportunities, and transforming systems and institutions. Today's Why We Talk episode is special because you know what? It's Mother's Day. We celebrate moms who impact the lives of so many every day. Women from all walks of life experience the joys and and challenges that come with raising a family. Today, we will hear from mothers and daughters who will share their lived experiences to encourage, educate, and perhaps inspire other mothers and daughters who are watching and listening in today. And there's a special note here um, that I want everyone to know is that the relationship between mothers and daughters can be the most rewarding relationship and sometimes the most challenging one. (laughs) We acknowledge today that not every mother-daughter relationship evokes fond memories and that some memories may trigger traumatic responses. If this is you, we make space for you in this conversation today and we welcome you to listen to your comfort level and ability. And I am actually going to, as we have another moment here, waiting for our fantastic mother. Oh, there she is. Janetta, I see her name. I see her. We see your name, Janetta. I know you're here. Uh, Um, Yes. Oh, yay. Hi. How are you? We're just waiting for your video there. Yes. So the fierceness of grandmother. (laughs) There you are. Welcome. Hello, welcome. Hello, everybody. <laughs> We're so happy you joined us. Uh, the fierceness of grandmothers and mothers and daughters, I tell you. <laughs> We're so glad that you're all here. And so, really, I want to go ahead and introduce who we actually have here with us today and start with Janetta Miller, who's mom, and her daughter, Jessica Coates. Hi. Janetta Miller recently retired from the Jefferson County Commission Tax Collector's Office. There she she served as a senior tax agent for 30 years. So congratulations, first of all, on the retirement. Thank Thank you. Janetta says that her passion is serving others. Her hobbies include dancing and reading. We could get along really well together. Um, And more importantly, Janetta says that she loves God, her family, and living life. Let's welcome Janetta. Thank you. Next, we have Janetta's daughter, Jessica Coates. Jessica is the Chief Executive Officer of the Howard County Association of Realtors. Yes. Jessica has a proven track record of driving brand growth, maximizing operational excellence, and exceeding financial performance standards. She currently serves as a National Association of Realtors, AEYPN Forum, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and, and Dr. McGraw, you, you know what? I didn't know that they were going to read the, oh, the background, <laughs> but but honestly, I'm I'm we're thrilled to be here, and um, it, it's a it's an honor to be a part of my hometown YWCA um, Mother's Day event. Um, but you definitely don't have to read that whole resume. Oh yeah, uh, you, I, you said that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, and, and and I forgive me, my staff sends it you know automatically but we yeah. appreciate you honestly. well they want to make sure that you get all the accolades and we we, we are so <laughs> grateful to have you here well thank uh, you so that. much yes and our next pair is um okay it's dr linda stone but we're going to call her linda today that's right she corrected us early <laughs> yes she got us straight earlier um so prior to retiring in may of 2018 i'm jealous of <laughs> dr stone <laughs> practiced as a pediatrician for 32 years. Wow. And upon graduating from Auburn University, I know she has a whole list of community involvement. um, And I want to just read a a couple of those. Just a couple, just two, (laughs) just just two. One of those is she's my board member. So I can just say that one is really really important. And um, she also is works with the, the junior league of Birmingham. And those are really 
great um, ways of women helping other women. And so it's really, um, I'm happy that you have joined us today. And then Callie is a member of our junior board and also very active in the community. Welcome to all of you again for being here. And we'll first go to a few questions on what we call kind of social um, issues, if you will. Right. So, Here's a very um, interesting fact. I had no idea that Mother's Day came about in, uh, let's see, 1858. Anne Reeves Jarvis organized Mother's Day work clubs to improve sanitary conditions, reduce her community's appalling infant mortality rates, and bring women together from both sides of the Confederate War. I had no idea. Um, Anne's daughter, Anna Jarvis, wanted to honor her mother's legacy after she passed. And through her efforts, Mother's Day came about when um, in 1914, when President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed the second Sunday in May as the day of public expression of our love and reverence for mothers of our country. Who knew? So, so Mother's Day was birthed from women who believe in community and service. So first I will go with our, let's see, how about Linda and Callie? Tell us why your family deemed it important to even be here to have this conversation today. Well, I, I think it's important for the community of women to work together to improve our community. And we can't do that unless we all work together and to improve the lives of the women and children who historically have been pretty powerless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think as we mentioned earlier, LaRonda, you know, Mom and I were both a little hesitant to join the conversation just because we were intimidated by public speaking, but we couldn't say no to the YWCA. You know, we've loved and supported this organization for so long. Um, and I also think that conversation is important, you know, especially this day and age. That's really where progress happens and how we learn about each other and uh, just makes us better people and more aware. I, I, I love that. I would agree. How about you, Janetta and Jessica? Why was this important to be here for you? Jessica, you began. Okay, I will start. Um, well, it's an honor to be a part of anything that the YWCA does. You know, it it is it aligns with some of our um, personal values. Um, I I too, Dr. Nash, I am a junior league member, four year active. Um, I started in Birmingham, the Birmingham League, and I'm now active here at the Baltimore League. So you know, those values of supporting and celebrating women. Um, and engaging in the community and just answering the call to the disparities of, of where we live. Um, so I'm honored to be a part of it. And Mother's Day is special to me. Um, my mom being my shero, um, anytime I have an opportunity to share, you know, some amazing experiences I've had as a kid and just growing up and, you know, developing to the woman that I am, I, I, I want to honor her and I want to be a part of that conversation. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's an honor to be a woman <laughs> because, you know, we play such an important wor wor uh, an important role in society. And it is very important for women to support each other because uh, we've had a long journey uh, from evolve into where we are today. And I'm so proud of all the women that have been so successful in their lives because at one time, women were like in the shadow. So um, I just think communicating with each other and supporting each other no matter what, you know, and, and never be jealous of each other. Mm -hmm. So that's it, very important that we really be each other's, uh, you know, uh, cheering, Perfect. cheering crowd. I love that and, and supporting one another. It's really yes. important. And I, so in, in that support, all of you serve your community and in various different ways, um, some of which we mentioned today. So for the daughters, what did you learn from your mother about serving or, or civic engagement? And, um, you know, how does she even model that to you uh, over time? So uh, Jessica, I'll, what do you first? I'll jump in. Um, it's, 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 we were going over these questions and it came so, um, um, authentic to me because my mom truly through her actions showed me that serving your community was just a way of life it wasn't because of there's a time you know standing up for crisis or um, doing it for a accolade for a resume I literally saw her giving of herself to her community um, every day every season every 
you know, part of my childhood. So it was ingrained in me um, that it's a lifestyle. And, you know, besides, you know, upkeep and the support of your home life, it's important that you create, you know, change in the community that you live. Um, so I saw it. It wasn't about what she was saying. It was her actions. Um, so it's embedded in me that it's an important part and a priority in my life to serve others. Yeah, I'll have to echo exactly what Jessica said. My, my mom uh, really embodied community involvement um, as mm -hmm. I was growing up. I remember, you know, she is a young pediatrician with three young children and, you know, just a busy life. And she would take her days off, like half of her day off and spend it volunteering. And, you know, <laughs> right. her day off. Um, so that really made an impression on me. Um, and, you know, I, I saw her to continue to do that throughout her life, whether what it was, she's also a junior league member, whether it was junior league or YWCA or, um, you know, even in her retirement, she's delivering meals on wheels and serves on nonprofit boards, um, volunteers. They are, at, yeah. They're so, busier when they're retired, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, it's like they need to, you know, it's like they don't want to not be busy. So they come up with a bunch of stuff to do. No, but it, it I, I have to, you know, really echo what you said that she really embodied civic engagement and service. And that's really what, um, you know, demonstrated to me that that's being a good citizen and that's really how you're supposed to live your life. And so just like you, Jessica, I've, I've tried to make that a priority as well. Mm -hmm. so, so as moms, was that an intentional thing that you did or did you feel that you were really doing something to show or to model that or were you just, just doing it? Was it just ingrained? You just did it. I think um, you can say all you want, but it's what you do that mm -hmm. makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And I guess I was conscious. I hoped that my children would pick that up, but um, that wasn't my overriding reason for serving. I just mm -hmm. do it. Did you ever take them with you to serve? Some. There wasn't as much opportunity for that 30 years ago, but I did. Um, Callie, my oldest in particular, did go with me on some volunteer missions mm -hmm. with a junior league. Okay. All right, Janetta, what about you? Uh, well, um, I, I guess I saw um, community involvement all my life through my family, from my grandparents. Uh, they had a community uh, grocery store. And, and the way they reached out, people, you know, they helped people because there was a lot of poverty uh, or people really couldn't pay. So my grandfather would, you know, put them on credit or whatever. But I've always seen my grandmother just, she'll feed a community because, you know, if, if she had it, then she would share it. And I learned that early on. And I guess her, her, her children, like my mother was an entrepreneur. Uh, mm -hmm. She had her own business restaurant. And she worked hard. So and she served her community, you know, and it was just ingrained in me. So when I did it, it wasn't anything that I, I, I didn't even think about that. I was showing my children, you know, you don't think about that when you're young, you just do. And they're involved with you. They see you. And they told me later on when they grew up that, you know, they, they were watching me. So um, I, I guess you just do it when you volunteer and do things and help others. You just do it unconsciously because it's part of you and your heart. Yeah, I think I love that what you said, Jessica, that giving is a lifestyle. Yeah. And, and I remember that. I think that this that is on point. So thank, thank you all for that question. So the next one is really... Um, some of us may take, I'm going to say may take for granted how openly we can share maybe now than maybe our, you know, generations and generations ago um, on issues that really impact women. And there were a lot of brave women in our history. And the reason that we are where we are is because there were a lot of women who did stand up and, and um, they yeah. had on their shoulders. But topics such as domestic violence were difficult, really difficult to discuss years ago. Um, mm -hmm feel difficult. And so to mothers, can you share with us what other issues may be facing women that were taboo um, a while ago that may not be so today? And um, Linda? Um, well, I think mental illness, mental health issues mm -hmm. have, were taboo for a long time. Oh, yeah. Um, not to admit or to even discuss and often 
there was no insurance money, if you even had insurance to be treated for mental illness. And I think one of those, um, particularly facing women, women is postpartum depression. Oh, so really yes. fairly recently, it wasn't even admitted to be a thing. And uh, women were ashamed if they didn't love their babies and they didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only in the last oh, couple of decades or so that it's been recognized as a very common, very treatable mental illness. Pediatricians are starting to screen the mothers now uh, in the last several years. Um, oh, wow. And it's other, it, it harms the baby, the development of the baby, as well as harming the mother. So that's one thing that I think there's been great improvement in, in recent times. Mm -hmm. I think there's some shame in that, right? That to, to, to admit, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What do you think, um, Janetta? Uh, well, I know there, there are many issues that were taboo um, back in the days, just like having children out of wedlock, uh, uh, working outside of the home, uh, taking leadership roles. Those were all like taboo things. And um, I, I think women with with, I guess, with the economic situation. I mean, they're just more liberal and, and, and you know, they can just, they, I guess they understand their power mm. and, and things are more acceptable now. So that's why you know, when you open a door for us, we go through it and that's then right. do it. <laughs> breaking, breaking glass ceilings. Yeah. Right. Or that, oh. Yeah, we say that all the time. Yeah, if you open that door, I, I say that. I'm like, I'm going to step right <laughs> in it. <laughs> Take right. over the world. That's right. <laughs> Provide those opportunities. I, I love right. that. I love that. And so the um, there are generational differences. We, we do know that. Um, that women of generation X and millennial women inherited a very different world mm -hmm. than the silent generation or maybe the baby boomers um, right. who were really born in an era where unmarried women could not access contraception and married women would have to ask their husbands for uh, permission to take a job as, as Jen mm -hmm. said, you know, taking some of those um, working was, was, a, was taboo. Um, even having their own checking account, right. Is just a, you know, couple of decade or, or more um, phenomena. So to have your own. So although the landscape of possibility has changed um, mm -hmm. significantly, there's still a lot of work to do. Mothers, mm -hmm. uh, what specific issues? Um, I think we talked a little bit about that. Are there issues that you think or other issues that may have progressed or not progressed enough in our lifetime? So we have mental health. We talked about that. We're coming along there. We're coming along with postpartum. Are there other things that you think um, really aren't making, we're not moving the needle? Absolutely. I, I want to jump in because sure, this is, is actually sensitive and dear to me right now. Um, mm -hmm. But the idea of, of women negotiating their work in mm -hmm. their professional, um, in their professions, and also just the data that is so accessible to us about the continued gender wage gap um, is startling. And um, even, you know, me and my, my new chief executive role, and I'm building my network of other CEOs across the countries and here, I mean, across, across the United States in other industries that, you know, as women, you know, we, we unintentionally are, are nurtured and conditioned to be this nurturing and just happy to be at, you know, have a seat, but we very often leave a lot on the table. Um, we are not trained to be negotiators. We are not trained to demand our worth. And we, that is an area I think that still needs work. Um, and, and, it, and it's a culture change. It's a different, yes, we're breaking barriers in almost every industry. We are leading um, the way. We are thought leaders, true enough, but we are still not being paid and compensated on the level of men. Um, so that is something that's dear to me. I'm continuously, you know, reading books, sharing books with my friends. We're empowering each other and we are normalizing talking finances amongst women. That's something that just doesn't happen. Um, I had a conversation at a junior league meeting, as a matter of fact. Um, and that's something that, you know, once, you know, once the, your guard is down and you discuss, you wouldn't believe how you can empower your fellow um, professional woman um, um, in your circle. So that is something that's dear to me. And a lot is there are tons of work that needs to, you know, continue. 
I love that. That was actually, uh, if, if there's someone else that would like to add to that, otherwise we, that's a great segue into uh, really talking about um, entrepreneurship and, and careers. And um, Oprah Winfrey once stated that on my own, I will just create. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, yeah. I'll create something else. <laughs> I don't have any limitations on what I think I could do or be. And I was speaking with someone earlier about um, just my, my mom and my mother's no longer here um, with, with us, but, uh, but that was always something that she instilled in me. It's like, whatever, whatever you want to do, you can do that, right? Mm -hmm. You can um, create that. So as entrepreneurs and uh, as women, um, career women, what advice would you offer, let's say, aspiring women entrepreneurs, women who want to get in there and do their own thing? So any, any who would like to share, take that one? Well, I would say, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I would say that, you know, um, just believe in yourself and believe that there are no limitations on what you can do. And on top of that, you know, of course, you have to, you know, kind of perfect your work ethics and, and be educated on the field. You know, it's just like playing a card game. You gotta know the rules. And, and once you know the rules, you can navigate. So I would tell anybody who's aspiring to be a, a business owner or whatever, educate yourself, um, you know, get familiar with everything and know your limitations, know what you have to work with. So, you know, and then once you learn, it's like I said, once you learn the game, you know how to play. That's right. Learn the rules and you can play the game. I That's think, right. was, that, was that Callie or Linda that was saying well, something? As a physician, you know, I, I wasn't an entrepreneur in the, in the tradi traditional sense. Mm -hmm. uh, my partner, Liz Hodges, and I did build a pediatric practice from practically nothing to a busy practice um, of seven women physicians. Oh, wow. I would say um, that it is important that the people that you partner with share your goals and share your values. Exactly. Um, we, tailor, we tailor the nature of our practice so that we would for sure practice excellent medicine, but also in concert with being present, raising our families, not having somebody else raise them. Right. But it's a matter of shared values with those that you work with. So important. It can make or break your, your business. Um, that is so true. So true. So we have... Um, you all have had success <laughs> in, in your uh, respective um, careers. What did you moms share with your daughters about managing a successful career? And it can be challenging, we know. So do you, did you say one thing or about how to do it, Janetta? Well, you know, I always have preached to my daughter to be honest. And, and operate with integrity with whatever she does and, and do things in completion. That's, that's been my number one thing. Don't start something and then halfway don't finish it, you know, take it all the way. Mm -hmm. and, and especially when you sign up for something, <laughs> be that beacon <laughs> and complete the task. And I just tried to instill in my daughter that, you know, you can do anything. Um, you know, uh, you, you got to, you can't slack. You got to learn what you have to learn, whatever you have to do and, and just be, be the best that you can be. So, uh, whoever you are, is like, you be that person when nobody is looking at you, mm -hmm. be that same person. So, yeah. And then you will success. But people, you know, your light will shine when people see you, they, it just comes out. Love that. I yeah, love that. I, I think this is another instance in which my mom modeled the behavior for me. You know, like we were talking mm -hmm. earlier about community involvement. So right. I don't know that she ever sat me down and said, you know, here, here are steps one, two, three on how you right. have a successful career. Right. Um, you know, but I watched her do it. I watched her raise a family and manage a household and have her own, you know, pediatric practice and also support her spouse with a demanding career. So, so I watched her do it and that empowered me to feel like, oh, well, if she can do it, I can do it. And mm -hmm. um, I can lean on her for support if I need it. Um, yeah. And I, I also think it's, it's really important for children to see their moms 
doing that, oh. um, you know, whether it's sons or daughters. I, I think that's really invaluable because that way they grow up knowing that women generally can do anything. They can do all things um, yeah. and they don't even <laughs> question equality. You know, hopefully we'll get to that point one day. That's um, right. Yeah, I, I, I would imagine that you are people are your children are seeing that in you as well, just like you are. Yeah, I, hope, I hope they do. I, I really sure. Linda. Yeah, I remember. Go ahead. I go to Linda. Um, I remember one uh, moment in my pediatric practice, and I was seeing maybe a five-year-old little boy, and I had a, a an intern from Children's with me, mm -hmm. a man, and and we were sitting there talking, and this little boy looked up and did his mother, and he said, "Can men be doctors?" And I thought, we have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> things have things are really looking up for women. <laughs> Jessica, you were going to say Yeah, something. I was gonna add something and 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 it's funny we're talking about this because it didn't come out when we were prepping for, for today's opportunity to chat. But you know, one thing that my mom showed me was, you know, no matter what industry you're in, if your work ethic is unmatched you can do anything, you know, you can supersede the talented, you can supersede the people with all the degrees, but if your work ethic is unmatched, you are a rock star. And seeing my mom, you know, she served the country in the Navy for 20 plus years, then she balanced the government job, raising kids as a single mom, and I just saw her work ethic like no other. It is, it's almost like that is that is the goal for me. If I can be an ounce of the worker bee and the, the person of integrity, then I, I think I'll be okay in this lifetime. Um, but yeah, that's something I saw. I agree with Callie again. It was just what they embodied. You know, we saw it as a living example. So it was easy to have that blueprint. And we do recognize that it's a, it's a privilege to have a mom that you can actually mimic. Um, everyone is not afforded that opportunity. So we do, I do understand that it's a privilege. So. Thank, you, thank you for saying that. And we, you know, I always say I'm a mom of three, three sons, uh, don't have a daughter, but um, mm -hmm. they, you know, didn't come with a book, right? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. No manual. So you just do it and, uh, and you hope that they um, see your example um, and do as well. And you, you mentioned earlier, um, Jessica, talking about um, pay and, and pay equity and things of that nature. And so what advice can you share with women? Any, um, and this goes to all of you um, who are at different stages of their career about mm -hmm. how to advocate for themselves when it comes to pay, when it comes to promotion and really just being treated um, fairly or equitably in the workplace. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, you have to believe that you're worthy. Um, that, that's a, yes, that's your mindset. Um, and always bet on yourself. And if you are prepared and that opportunity meets your preparation, it's time to rise to the occasion. Um, but one thing I do want people to walk away is, you know, uh, secure a mentor. Mentorship yeah. is so important. I think that's something that we play down and, um, we don't talk about enough in, in, um, just, people in your professional careers, but having a mentor truly can help you step out of your box and see things in a different light and perspective. Um, and it has really been um, probably the most profound thing that I could have done in my adult life is secure a mentor and make sure that I'm surrounded by people that pour into me professionally and um, personally. Mm -hmm. So okay. bet on yourself, advocate for yourself and make sure you have a mentor that you can rely on. Okay, and we'll next go to Janetta. Uh, well, you know, as, as women, we always have to fight for justice, mm -hmm. you know, and especially in the workplace. Um, I had to experience a lot of injustices through my work career, but I always fought for it. I would not take, you know, things that people say and I, I would have a basis for what I had to say, because I read the rules and and I read the principles that drive that. So no one could just tell me anything. It's like, I would demand respect. You know, if someone disrespected me, I would say, well, I don't appreciate that, but I'm gonna respect you whether I like you or not. 
Mm -hmm. And I demand the same thing back. So you you just have to really put yourself in a position where uh, you are aware of your surroundings and, and know what you have to fight for. Because some things are not worth fighting for, but there are things that are. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for you, it's for others that come behind you. And that was always my goal. Because whatever battles I fought, I didn't fight them for just me. I fought them for me to be elevated, but also for my team or the people that are coming up behind me. So mm -hmm. it's like my motto is always be a friend to justice and wisdom. I love that. I love that. What do you think, Linda, in terms of advocating for yourself in the workplace? Well, you know, Kelly and I were talking about this. We were, neither one of us really have faced uh, too much hardship. And I think some of that probably has to do with white privilege. Um, and some of it, it just has to do with the careers that we've chosen. You know, by the time I was a, I, I would say in medical school, a couple of times the men doctors were a little discriminating, but by mm -hmm. the time I got to pediatric residency, they're over half women. Um, and I, and I did have a good mentor, a, a resident a, year, a couple of years older. I think that's important. Um, the other thing I would say, uh, as well as having a mentor, I know everybody wants to grow up and move away to a far place and build a career. There's a lot to be said for being near family. Um, mm -hmm. I would see the stress of young parents who'd moved to town. They had no family in town. They're both working. They have a sick child. So somebody, usually the wife, has to take off from work, which is stressful. Mm -hmm. um, whereas if you have some extended family, aunts, grandparents, or cousins who can step in and be your support at a moment's notice, um, that makes becoming an entrepreneur and being successful a lot less stressful. Mm -hmm. That is so interesting. I, I There was a shift where there felt like that families were all together and then we are gone moved all over the place and then and many are um for different reasons bringing um coming coming back closer to home so what do you what do you think kelly anything to add there yeah so uh, like my mom said I, i've been really fortunate to work for a team of mostly women um very like compassionate understanding women who are my cheerleaders mm -hmm. and um uh, who are my mentors um and my partners so um i i have not had personal experience, but I know in other industries, it is definitely an uphill battle for many women. Um, and I was going to say something similar to what Jessica said about finding a mentor or, or finding a part, a partner, somebody mm -hmm. yeah, that you can, um, that you can discuss these things with, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that can support you in that way. Um, you know, and if, if you're looking at companies to work for, uh, look at their track record on, um, yeah. you know, how they treat w women, what, uh, what their benefits are for women, um, you know, educate yourself on, on what that company is. If, if you have the privilege to do that, right. I mean, many women, you know, are, are just doing the job that's available to them. Um, but you know, if, if you're looking at pursuing a career, um, I, I think we, we can advocate for ourselves, um, better if we really know, you know, what we're getting into. So. I like what you said around like benefits, for instance, and, you know, uh, you know, companies, you know, ours included, we, you know, we have to look at those, uh, whether or not our benefits are supporting um, uh, working, working parents. And so um, that is really, really important. So thank you for that. And then maybe a segue into family and parenting a little bit. And really, we juggle a lot, <laughs> I think, as women, just in general, um, many of us. And what advice can you provide to um, a woman who may be struggling a bit with that work life, wife, partner, um, mom, <laughs> balance? You know, is, is there such a thing even uh, around balance? And so um, who would like to take, take that one on? I can start. Um, sure. You know, it, it's a struggle. It's hard. We all struggle with it. Um, but I, I think it's important to find some sort of balance to avoid burnout. Uh, my, my biggest piece of advice was, is don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, That's right. that, that really is the key. We all need help, whether we want to admit it or not. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my main piece of advice. All right. Janetta, you like you were about to say something. Yes. I, I wanted to piggyback off of Linda. Um, 
Is that Linda? That's Callie. Callie. That's Callie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you have to, you can't be afraid to ask for help. Um, you know, I was a divorcee and I had to raise my kids uh, by myself. And um, I wasn't afraid to ask for family support as far as keeping my kids, because I was like, I went to school, I went to Birmingham Southern College at night, uh, worked a full time job. And then I was in the military reserve. So that took me away sometimes. But I, I found grandmamas. I found my own grandparents, my own parents and my grandparents to help, my aunties. And then I got community, people that were in the community that were grandmothers. And they were keeping their grandkids. And I would keep mine. And I just was, I, you surround yourself with people who are love and understand what you're going through and they're there for you. And uh, from the from the school to the community to other Church. people that I was referred to that helped me, it's like I couldn't have made it without that community. Mm -hmm. So if you, village, don't have, really yeah, if you don't have family that's near, you can build your own community. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. That's how I was able to put a balance between it all. Linda, how'd you balance it all? Well, sometimes I just said no to things I was asked to do. Mm -hmm. um, mm. I was in the junior league, but I wasn't in the leadership of the junior league. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I could take on more responsibility. Um, and so I think you just have to set boundaries. One thing Callie mm -hmm. said, and she didn't mention it, but when we were talking, she said, if you're a person who makes lists, put yourself on the list. Oh. Take time for yourself to give your, yourself some self-care. That's important too to keep from burning out. Yeah, and and that's honestly, Callie, we're on the same thought process because that was my biggest thing: prioritize self care. And guess what? Self care is whatever you determine it right. to be. But if you are depleted, how can you give of yourself? How can you show up at your best self? So I prioritize self care. It doesn't. It's not the remedy for everything. But Jessica loves being pampered. Jessica <laughs> is going to put herself on that list. Jessica is going to budget for Jessica. And it's important because I can show up every day, you know, as my best self because I'm taking care of me, you know? So I love that. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not great at it, but <laughs> we all have to work at it. I'm learning. I'm learning from you. Yes. Yeah. So great. All right. So, and you all are getting a lot of, lot of great wisdom in the chat. Um, and people are really loving it. And I think there is a question here. Um, and hopefully Logan, we answered it around tips in sustaining great careers and, you know, being, being uh, mothers and, um, and wives. Um, and let's see. Yep. A lot of, a lot of thanks. I just want to make sure I'm catching any questions that may be in the, in the chat here. Okay, that we haven't answered. All right. So this one's a little bit around um, diversity. At the YW, we celebrate diversity in, in all of its um, forms. And we aspire to be an anti-racist organization that um, is color brave and not color blind. I love that. We celebrate and we embrace differences, um, not tolerate, <laughs> as, as mm -hmm. uh, some, some folks would say. And so women working together across lines of difference, we know they can truly transform and improve life for all women. So what do you think is important for people to know either about your culture or about being a woman um, from your, uh, your community, if you will? What, is, what should someone know about you? I know this is always a tough one. <laughs> Um, why don't you start off? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, so you mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> what, do, oh, what do you think is important for people to know about your culture or about women from your community? Who do you want? Uh huh. Janetta, I, I thought Janetta was going to say. Oh, no. I'm oh. <laughs> oh, you want me to start? Yes. <laughs> What is important you see, about... You see, Jessica did that. She was like, mom. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's important to know from whence you come, okay? Um, I was... Uh, my family, we're close-knit. Um, 
my grandparents had nine children. So uh, that, that's the beginning of that community of family. And um, the, the culture that we have, it, it stems from way back from our great grandmothers. My grandmother, was, my great, great grandmother, I respected her wholeheartedly. It's like everybody in the family respected her. So it's like, um, it's, it's, it's like even the way she ate her food or whatever and the way food is prepared. And it's something that you hold on to. So uh, it's just important to, to know from whence you come and, and you bring that forward because you pass it down to your children about uh, preparing food, uh, keeping your home, taking care of your children and just everything, everything. We're not here alone. We're standing on the shoulders of those who brought us along. And that's, that's something that is so important to me because it's part of my culture mm -hmm. and our culture as an African-American. I'm, I'm so proud. I'm proud to be an African-American, although we might've had a lot of ugly history, but, mm -hmm. but it's like we, as a people, we love others and, and love everybody and, and just know that, you know, family is your strength. Right. Family and community is your strength. And then I find strength in my church family. Uh, we are, uh, you know, we have um, a religious strength, too, that, that kind of brings us together. And I'm just proud of my culture. I'm proud mm -hmm. of my culture. I'm proud of being an American. And, uh, and I'm proud of all of the opportunities that we have today. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can't follow that, but I'm just going <laughs> to add because we are, we are a part of the same community. And, um, you know, one thing I want to leave with everyone is that, you know, we are people, a spiritual people, a people of faith, resilient. Mm -hmm. Resilient is my, is my buzzword because I've seen it, I've lived it. And, um, you know, uh, um, a people who, live and we are very prideful prideful in our accomplishments and our contributions to this country in mm -hmm. everything from science yes. to art to music everything. to technology and I'm, I'm very proud to be an african-american woman so there was a lot there Callie I'm gonna kick it over to you Okay, uh, you know, Laurent, I struggled with this question. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> we both did. I, I struggled with it because it's like, I, I, well, I, I couldn't come up with a, a characteristic or, or something about um, our culture or our community um, that I felt like, you know, really said something about all the people within that culture or community. Mm -hmm. um, you know. I think what was really, in what's interesting is that, um, a lot of what you both have talked about today is your is your culture. I mean, you talk. You yeah. talk about, it's what you create. Watching yeah. your mom, yeah, that the value yeah. of work and all of that. That's um, you know a part of it. You're right, you're right. So I think I may, I probably was trying to objectify it too much. Um, <laughs> but sort of what I came away with from the question was, you know, my culture and community has really shaped me. But I don't know that I I want to necessarily be defined by it because um, mm -hmm. I think all of us, you know, black, white, male, female, um, mm -hmm. we're just much more complex than that as humans. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my, my takeaway from it. It didn't answer the question, but that, that's sort of. I love that. And it's, you know, and I think it's just no. looking at it, yeah, in, in different different um, lenses and different ways. No. Linda, anything to add there? Well, you know, we did not grow up. We grew up in a, you grew up in the African-American culture. We grew up in a white culture, a mm -hmm. non-diverse culture. But I don't think that that means that, I don't think that defines us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think particularly through our church, I think, um, I think we all need to work together, black and white, male and female. Mm -hmm. I think women have to stick together because we're the ones that haven't had the That's power. Right. That's and right. mm -hmm. all the things that particularly Jessica mentioned standing up for ourselves. So I don't, I, so I don't think our culture has defined us as, as I guess what I'm trying to say. Well, I, I love that. And I think the, the very fact that you, you two are involved with the YW whose, whose mission really is at the intersection of gender and race really, um, um, you know, culture is so much more than, than race. And, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, really a lot of the things that you all have mentioned today, I was just like taking that all in, like even having a village and um, how we prepare food and how we teach our children and, and really uh, that whole resilience and your church, your faith and those sorts of things um, really shape you. And so I thank you all for um, for that one and to continuing continuing to learn and discover, um, you know, how we're, um, our culture really does in a lot of ways shape us, but it doesn't define us. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. So as a mom, a boy, what values were important to you to pass down to your daughter? I feel like I'm always worrying about something I didn't do right. I'm like, man, I didn't teach that particular lesson. <laughs> or, oh, I wish he would have gotten that one. Um, so is there something that you, um, I'm going to go with this one, I think, instead. Moms, what was maybe your chief worry or concern Um about your your daughters and you know or children if you have more more um boys there what were you concerned about what kept you up in mind well i i just didn't want her to suffer in any way you know heartache any kind of pain um I, you know we all we as mothers i mean we're ordained by god to be protectors and and we forever want our children to be happy and be successful. So, uh, you know, you just, that's one of the concerns. You just worry, especially when they grow up and go away, you know, your children are extensions of you and you just worry about them until you get, you got to get conditioned to, well, well, she's an adult now. Yeah, if I can take care of myself, <laughs> she can take care of herself, you know, yeah. but you have to evolve to that. So, you know, a, a mother's biggest concern is that her, her child lives and 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 not be harmed by anything and um and be safe and that's why we navigate them to be educated and and teach them the right things to do so they're they'll have positivity in their life so that's my take is just um you know i wanted her to be um a fulfilled adult i love that what about you linda no, I will say you never stop worrying about your children. Right. <laughs> Sometimes it's harder when they're adults because you can't control it. <laughs> you know, when they're little, you can you can be sure they're safe and you can make them do the right thing. And of course, you lose that control as they grow older and you hope as they get into their teenage years and college years, they don't turn into the wrong path. You hope that you've taught them your values and love for God um, well enough when they're young that when they're old, they won't depart from it. Amen. Right. <laughs> I, I love that. That is so good. I sometimes I talk about it's, it's like driving a car and you're like, oh, my gosh, like I'm in the back seat <laughs> and you're driving, but I have no control, no control over it. Um, so interesting. Um, what is something that you did not know about motherhood or giving birth <laughs> that no one told you? Ooh, that was from our, our, our chat question there. Yeah, I can I can say one thing. I I had. When I had Jessica, I really didn't know about breastfeeding. Ah. And I've always been an advocate for health. I want the best for my children, you know? And when I had her, I really tried what I hadn't read and prepared myself so I couldn't breastfeed her. But when I had my second child, I was educated. I worked for the health department at least 12 or 13 years. And within my career there, I learned so much about being a mother and about providing the right nutrition and all of that. And I learned about breastfeeding, you know, and that is something that is a God given gift Mm -hmm. because it is like, it was, it's wonderful to do that because I just never, when I experienced breastfeeding, it was like, it's like the rubber meeting the road. And I had no idea my body would react to breastfeeding the way it did. And um, it was amazing, but she was, <laughs> when I would tell, I try to educate other people, always encourage, yes, I'm yes. always encourage everybody <laughs> that's a mother to breastfeed <laughs> because you give your baby so much. And, and then when she would hear me talking about it, well, did you breastfeed me? And, and then if I said no, I only said no one time. And, she just, and so every time. It was three or four, by the way. I know. Every time I would talk about it, she'll be around and, and she'd say, well, you breastfed me too, right? I said, yes. <laughs> but 
it's like breastfeeding i mean that is the ultimate goal of any mother they should do that because it gives the baby everything they need i love that advocacy linda well, i think we have something to well, say I about that too. pressure i felt a little pressure about breastfeeding <laughs> when i had Sally because i'm a pediatrician right <laughs> what if it doesn't work right um, and thankfully it worked out well i will say with my son he was a biter Oh gosh, mm. well, he was much harder and had a lot harder time. <laughs> but I knew that it wasn't me because I do it was fine with Callie. <laughs> so I would say encourage breastfeeding, but I'd also say, you know, as a pediatrician, I would always encourage it. But yeah. it, it didn't work. I didn't want the mothers to feel yeah that they were no shaming. Them. Yes, so there you, there's kind of a fine line there. Certainly, it's the best food for your child. Yeah. But sometimes. Yeah mothers are unable to and, and you have to support them that's true th then as well yeah that that is it there can, can be a lot of pressure but that that bonding i, I definitely agree oh, great. yeah yeah. Cannot, yeah cannot replace it so what makes you most proud when you think of your mother and i'm going to say of your daughter like if someone were to put you on a television show and say, hey, what, this one thing um, I am most proud of with my mother, Callie, would be what? Um, I think how many lives my mom has touched throughout her career as a pediatrician yeah. and her, um, her work in the community as well. Um, mm. yeah. That's beautiful. Jessica? Um, when I think about it, I'm, I'm so proud of her with so many different things, but I think what, what is deeply rooted in me is I'm very proud that the choices she made in life and the sacrifices she made, she had myself and my brother as her top priority. And I understand, I, I, I just always want to bring it out because I know it's a privilege to um, experience that. But in everything she did from um, work, community service, um, just how she took care of us and prioritized our education, our nurturing, um, our upbringing, you know, she, she was selfless. So I'm just proud of that because it's a choice, you know, it's a choice. I, I, I have colleagues all over the country and, you know, we always are balancing and, and trying to, you know, have that perfect um, um, way of doing things because we, we are, you know, women of many hats. But I saw my mom put me first and it made a, it was a positive impact on my life. So. And I want to I want to answer this because I have a 17 year old. So my mom's oldest grandkid is my daughter, Nadia. And I was thinking, like, why, why am I proud of her? I just wanted to throw this out because this is really profound. I'm so proud of my daughter because she is so authentic. She shows up as her 100 percent self. It's almost inspiring that this generation of kids are so empowered but so comfortable in her own skin. She doesn't, she doesn't die down to any, any room. They have to conform to her. And I just love it. I love I mean, it. I'm they inspired. are incredible. They, I mean, they are. They are so much Oh, great. my goodness. <laughs> They're that, so that, much yes, more prepared. And prepared, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And authentic. So um, I'm going to go with you, Linda. What are you most proud of when you think of Callie? Well, I had a really hard time with this and coming up with one thing. And so mm -hmm. I asked Jeff, my husband, her dad, and, you know, the, being the engineer, he said, well, Callie is just a good, really good quality person. Ooh. And I have to add. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> she, is, she is kind, caring, responsible, capable, dependable, a hard worker, a good mm -hmm. mother, a loving daughter. No. Oh, that's that's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Now don't, don't start crying. We're not that's done. Beautiful. <laughs> Is it supposed to end that way, LaRonda? <laughs> now you you gotta ask a funny question or something, Doctor. I'm going there next. I'm going there next. Okay. And I'm gonna let you give us the proud, and then I'm getting my tissues. <laughs> um, well, I am I am very proud of my daughter. Um, ever since she was a little girl, she's always been um, very um, outstanding. Um, she's always been um, a front runner, a leader, even in our class. And she, she mimicked me, you know, she used to see me do things like sell perfume, sell Tupperware. And she even would like 
charged the kids in her class in second grade to be in her club, which is what? What kind of club? She would charge a nickel to <laughs> that. I don't trouble. know if that's a proud but, moment. <laughs> but she, I mean, it's just like she would take charge of whatever in her mind that she wanted to do. She would just, you know, take the opportunity and go with it. She's written books. <laughs> this is as a child. And she's did plays, all kind of stuff because she believed in herself. And that was a, that's something, and she exemplifies that to this day. I told her, I said, you're the same little girl that you are today, and you're doing the same thing. You're standing out, standing up, and taking charge of your life and your surroundings. So I am, I'm just absolutely proud thing. of my, huh? You see this I, generational thing happening, right? She just talked about her daughter. <laughs> yes, yes, and and absolutely. I mean, it's like I empowered her. I, I tried to expose her to as much as I could, and and I just made her believe. I mean, she already believed that she could do anything anyway. But I always supported her, and wanted her to be the best. So she has really. I mean, she's a CEO. I never imagined. So I am oh, so proud. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, mom. Well. I know I should have grabbed my tissue. This is just terrible. <laughs> y'all, y'all are so cute, all of you. Okay, now, I, okay, we're gonna throw a funny one in. Let me think about Please. it. Please. Okay. <laughs> my mother had some quirky little things that she would do too. They were just really funny, but there were things. I'm like, oh, mom, please don't do that. You're embarrassing me. Okay, so. What is the thing that you go, oh, mom, please, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> what would that be for you? <laughs> what would that be for you? And I'm going to wait and let you think about it, Kelly and Jessica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something quirky. Was your mom the kind that, you know, you come home and every people were in your house because she was feeding the whole neighborhood and, you know. <laughs> um, I won't call it quirky, but mom was you know, she, she, she shared with you guys that she was a military woman. Um, and it takes my girlfriends from childhood to really um, share the story. And we died laughing. So, you know, my mom was this militant, very serious um, woman who, who, who really had expectations of order, organization, and, um, really your chores were your top priority in, in order to get anything extra, any playtime. So when we would have company, now she allowed us to have company. Everything that she, she demanded of us, the company had to do it too. So we were cleaning up. If we had chores, it was almost like, well, you all have plans to go to the movies, right? Well, this house better be cleaned up before. And so my friends were like, why did I come over here? <laughs> what is what is going on? Like we're kids, and and to this day they die laughing. They mimic her, and it was really she, you know, she laid the law down, and she had expectations on her kids. And if you were in her home, she treated you like her child. Right. Um, she <laughs> had a you know a, a strict regimen, and um, it's funny now, but back then I was like. Oh my God, I can't wait to go off to school. I thought it was the worst thing, but it built character. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. organized because she was organized, right. you know? So yeah, it's, it's funny that, now. I think I might, I think I might've been that mom. Janetta, we, I think we can, uh, <laughs> we can relate. Kelly. <laughs> okay. This, this is, this is so random, but my mom has really nice taste. Um, but she has recently found a new love for the Dollar Tree. Oh my god! <laughs> I think that's kind of quirky. She, <laughs> I do love a bargain. She does love a bargain. She loves a bargain. You know, she loves to dig through the racks at TJ Maxx and yeah. <laughs> yeah. me too. TJ Maxx, <laughs> yeah. Marshalls. What's your favorite, yeah. um, Linda? What's your favorite section in the Dollar Tree? Like, where do you go when you go to the Dollar Tree? Well, it depends. Um, our church fixes Easter baskets for underprivileged kids, you know, so then I'm buying the toys and the Easter oh, baskets and whatever. so sweet. Um, I get lots of bubbles for my grandchildren there. You can get these big things of uh, bump to blow bubbles for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. Cards yeah. are only 50 cents at the Dollar Tree. See, I'm telling you, you love the Dollar Tree. <laughs> this is a serious matter, Kelly. I would, I would have never expected this of my mom. But. <laughs> I love it. 
I, you know what? I could talk to you all all, all day. Um, thank you so much for spending your Friday afternoon with us and for sharing your, your story, your love for each other. I, I tell you, you are just a, a gem and we really appreciate it. And to all, all of those who are listening, um, thank you for attending our Why We Talk. Check our website and social media platforms for details on upcoming episodes. And join us on the 21st of May at noon for our Orange Chair Why We Talk discussion about how to address gaps caused by what education thought leaders are referring to as the pandemic learning loss, sponsored mm. by Vulcan. Again, we'd like to thank our guests for such a wonderful conversation. I am honored that you decided to spend your time with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. for having us. Thank you so much. Happy Have Mother's good, Day. Happy, happy Mother's right. Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.